Good morning, friends. I am Dr. Jigar Agarwal. I am an associate professor at JG College of Commerce, and I have been teaching accountancy for the last 20 years. Today, I am here to discuss the topic of branch accounts with you. Now, before we move to the practicals, let us discuss the basic theory for a brief while. Let us see what is the meaning of a branch. What is a branch? So, branch is a representative unit or a replica of its parent company. What is the main objective of such a branch? The idea is to expand operations, to get near to the customer so that sales would increase and so would the profitability. Now, there are three such basic types of branches. First is independent branch, second is dependent branch and third is foreign branch. So, let us see what do these types of branches mean. Basically, the terms are self-explanatory. So, without going into detailed description, let us take an example of an independent branch. For example, Domino's Pizza or Pizza Hut or even Reebok Shoes or Nike Shoes. These are all examples of independent branches. Because what they serve in India, they don't serve abroad. For example, you take say Europe, they don't have the same models or same products in Europe. They serve completely different set of products in India. So, we can say that they are independent branches. A dependent branch is a branch uh, that depends on his head office. For example, uh, Mercedes, BMW, Audi, these are all the companies they have products which are sold universally all across the globe. So, they depend on the headquarter and their main office for the supply of goods and services. Whereas foreign branch in this day and age of multinational companies, all the companies have foreign branches. So, we can say that all the companies, when a, when, a, when a company has a branch abroad, located abroad, it is known as a foreign branch. But that is not a part of your syllabus. Now, without wasting time, uh, let us move to the uh, practical example. So, just study the example well and I guarantee that you will score 14 out of 14. Over the last 4 or 5 years, I have observed that every year, every single year, university has asked a full length. 14 month, 14 marks example from this chapter. So, if you study this video attentively and if you solve the example on your own, you are bound to score 14 out of 14. After discussing theory, let us move to the practical aspect of uh, the chapter. Now, normally they ask 14 marks question from the chapter and that normally that question is from independent branch. Now, what does an independent branch prepare in its final accounts? So, it prepares one trading account, it prepares profit and loss account and head office account and balance sheet. Now, trading account is just like a normal trading account as a sole trader would prepare. The profit loss account as you all are familiar is just a normal profit loss account that a sole trader would prepare. And head office account is equivalent to a capital account. In case of an independent branch, head office account is a capital account. And finally, you have to prepare the final balance sheet of the branch. Now, let us take a look at the example. You can see on the screen that uh, I am taking up an example that has been asked for so many years in university exams. Uh, let me read out the example first. Uh, Apple Company Limited of Delhi has an independent branch at Ahmedabad and the trial balance of the Ahmedabad branch as on 31st March 2020 is as under. Now, this is how you have to prepare the accounts. You can see on the board, I have prepared all the four accounts. I have prepared the trading account, profit and loss account, head of head office account, which is just another name for capital account and branch balance sheet. Let us deal with the trial balance. You can see on the screen that there are several items in the trial balance. Let us record these items in the accounts that I have drawn. Starting with Opening stock of goods. Where will it? Where will you show this opening stock? I am recording the opening stock, which is which of course is shown on the debit side of trading account. Opening stock will be debited here. Opening stock is one lakh rupees. Then you have goods received from head office. Now for an independent branch. Goods from head office is just like a purchase from market. So again, it will be recorded as a purchase in the trading account. So I'm mentioning this here, uh, goods from head office, goods from head office. In the inner column, because just as there is a purchase, there may be return also. So goods from head office in the inner column, 3 lakhs. Following that, we have goods returned to head office. So, this is nothing but another 
another example of purchase return just as you received goods from head office and you record the same as a purchase when you return goods to head office it is nothing but purchase return so to be deducted from uh, the goods from head office so minus returned returned to head office the amount is 40,000 so your net receipt of goods from head office in the outer column will be 260,000 then you have the balance of head office account that is the opening balance of head office account this is nothing but opening balance of capital account and it has a credit balance it will always have a credit balance so let us record the opening balance on the credit side we will write here by balance brought down by balance bd and the amount is 3 lakhs following that we have purchase and sale of goods and there are also goods returns so purchase of course will be debited to trading account so we will record here two purchases in the inner column because we have to deduct returns also purchases in the inner column 3 lakhs and sales is that we will show on the credit side of trading account sales amounts to rupees 7 lakh 20 thousand again in the inner column then what are the goods returns 40,000 and 20,000 of course we know that the debit of debit balance of goods return is uh, sales return so that will deduct from sales minus sales return and the amount is 40,000 so net sales in the outer column will be 680,000 Similarly, there is a purchase return that will deduct from purchases minus return. It is nothing but purchase return and the amount is 20,000. So, outer column, your net purchase will be 2,80,000. Right? Moving on, freight and octroi. It is a purchase expense, so will be debited to trading account. It's a purchase expense, so here freight and octroi. And the amount is 20,000. Then you have salaries and allowances. Of course, we know that salaries are debited to profit and loss account, but there is a date attached to the transaction and the date mentioned is 28th of February 2020. Now the year ends on 31st March 2020. The year ends on 31st March 2020 and uh, the salaries and allowance has been paid up to 28th of February. So what it means is that we have paid salaries only for 11 months. That means one month salary and allowances is outstanding. So when we record, we'll also have to deal with this hidden adjustment. So we'll debit it to profit and loss account here on the debit side. We'll mention salaries and allowances. Salaries and allowances. In the inner column, amount is 44,000. And this is for how many months? 11 months. So, one month salary, 11 months 44,000, one, one salary will be 4,000 and that is outstanding. So, that of course we know what to do, we have to add it. So, we will write here outstanding salary and allowance. So, 4,000 will be added here and the total salary in the outer column will be 48,000. Now, this salary is outstanding, so it is also your liability. So, will be recorded in the balance sheet on the liability side. We will write it here outstanding salaries and allowances, and the amount in the outer column will be 4000. Next is wages. Of course, we know that wages are debited to trading account. So, let us do that. On the debit side, we have 
wages and the amount is 16,000. Then next we have bad debts and bad debts recovered. Now bad debts is your loss will be debited to profit and loss account and bad debts recovery is your income that will be credited to profit and loss account. So let's do that. Debit bad debts here. Amount will be 4000 and let us credit bad debts recovery. And the amount is 10,000. Okay. Then next we have uh, debtors and creditors. Both will be shown in the balance sheet. Debtors being your asset will be shown on the asset side here. Debtors. Debtors 1,76,000 straight away in the outer column. And creditors 80,000 again straight away in the outer column, they will be here. Creditors, creditors will be 80,000. Next is cash in bank, and both have balances. So, cash has a debit balance, and bank, of course, has a credit balance. That means bank having a credit balance means it is a bank overdraft. So, it will be shown as a liability in the balance sheet. Let us record the cash balance first here. Cash balance. That of course is a debit balance and the amount is 10,000. And bank balance. That is a credit balance. That means it is a bank overdraft. So, that we will record as a liability. Bank overdraft. Amount is... 30,000 and last of course is an investment we must have made look at the item it is 10% government securities that means we must have purchased this investment on the date of 1 10 2019 that means six months back we had purchased this investment face value is given and the amount is 1 lakh 90,000 first of all record this as an investment here it will be 10% government securities, government securities and the amount in the outer column will be 1,90,000. We can see that there is no reference regarding the income receivable on this investment that means it is again a hidden adjustment so six months income is receivable on the investment we have made because we purchased the investment on 1st october and today is when we are closing the accounts what is the date 31st march so for the past months there is an receivable income receivable on the investment so that must also be recorded as an income so with that we will record on the credit side of profit and loss account, we know that incomes, all incomes are shown on the credit side. So, we will write here income receivable once again, we can see that we purchase 10 percent government securities on 1st October 2019 and today when we close the books on 31st March 2020, uh, there is no reference even when you Go further, you can see that there is no, we have not received any income from this investment. So, we have to record it as an income receivable on government securities and that we have to calculate on face value. So, what is the face value of the investment? 2 lakh rupees. What is the rate of interest? 10% and 6 months income is receivable on the same. So, that will be 10,000. This is your income. So, you will show it on the credit side of profit and loss account. At the, side, at the same time, this is also your asset. So, we can, we will show it as your current asset. So, we will show it on, show it on the asset side here. Income receivable. Income receivable on government securities. And the amount of course is 10,000.
2 lakhs is the investment that is a face value at the rate of 10 percent and half yearly interest so it will be 10,000. Now let's look at the additional information given in the example you can see on your screen uh, the closing stock is valued at rupees 1 lakh 20,000 so let us record the closing stock where will you show the closing stock once it will be on the first effect will be on the credit side of trading account and the other it will be recorded as an asset on the in the balance sheet so let's record here by closing stock and the amount is 1 lakh 20,000 so we have done that we have recorded the closing stock now uh, look at the second uh, adjustment look at the second adjustment goods worth rupees 20,000 was sent by the head office that means who are we we are branch we are preparing this uh, uh, this account in the books of branch so goods worth rupees 20,000 was sent by the head office to the branch that means they sent the goods to us on 28th of March that is three days back but we have received the goods but the same was received by us that is the branch on 5th April 2020 that is next year that means we can we can say that they have sent us goods but as on as of today when we are closing the books on 31st March 2020 we have not received the goods that means goods are somewhere midway goods are in transit that means for us no transaction has taken place so there will be no entry for this adjustment why because they have sent us goods but we have not received the goods as on 31st March 2020 so there will be no entry for the adjustment this is known as goods in transit of course the head office will record the transaction but we as a branch will not record the transactions now look at the third adjustment cash rupees 40,000 was sent by the branch that means we send the cash to the head office on 29th of March that means two days back today is 31st March so two days back we send the cash of 40,000 to head office but the same was received by the head office on 2nd April 2020 that means two days later that means uh, uh, as of today the head office has not uh, received the cash that we had sent it on 29th of March that means this is cash in transit so when we send the cash to head office what entry we, we must have passed the entry must have been head office account debit to cash and today when we are closing the books we can see that the transaction has effectively not taken place that means they have not received the cash so we have to credit uh, the head office account by because head office was debited but the cash has not been received by the head office so we have to credit the head office account and the it will be known as cash in transit cash in transit because cash is not with us and cash has also not reach uh, cash has also not reached the head office so that will be known as cash in transit so earlier we debited the head office account when we must have sent the cash to head office but today we know that the cash has not reached the head office so we have to credit the head office account all right and cash of course still belongs to us but cash is not in our pocket cash is somewhere midway and that is known as cash in transit so we will again it is an asset and we will record on the asset side but we will call it cash in transit and the amount is 40,000 so what are the two effects of cash in transit once it will be recorded on the credit side and the other effect will be it will be it is still an asset so it will be recorded as an asset on the asset side moving to the last adjustment on 1 10 2019 that means six months back the head office sent furniture that means they sent us furniture worth rupees 1 like 20,000 on the to the branch the account of which is to be maintained in the books of head office that means furniture account is maintained in the books of head office so we will not record furniture as an asset in our balance sheet why because the account is maintained by the head office however we are using the furniture so we may have to bear the depreciation now uh, below that you are also given the rate at which the furniture is to be depreciated it says depreciate furniture at the rate of 10 percent per annum right so we have to bear the depreciation on the furniture depreciation is an expenditure non-cash expenditure however we have to debit it to profit and loss account so let us debit depreciation to profit
profit and loss account on the debit side we will write here depreciation the amount of furniture is 1,20,000 rate is 10 percent and the debris is to be calculated for six months why because we received the furniture on 1st October so six months October November December January February March so six months depreciation at the rate of 10 percent will be 6,000 correct so depreciation is debited to profit and loss account and now depreciation we don't record furniture so there is no question of deducting depreciation from the asset disclosed by the balance sheet on the asset side but we have to then uh, the furniture belongs to the head office so now we'll credit depreciation to head office account why because the furniture belongs to head office so we'll record here on the credit side by depreciation by depreciation on furniture and the amount in the outer column will be 6000 so that's it folks we are pretty much through with the example let us close the books of accounts uh, let's uh, get the total of uh, branch trading account we are pretty much closing the accounts we can see that the credit side is higher so the total comes to 8 lakhs Now let us draw the gross profit from trading account here we will write gross profit what will be the amount of gross profit in this case <clears throat> deduct this 360,000 then 560 so 640 and 660 so 140 so this will be what will be the amount of it 7 then 15 17 18 so 2 1 lakh 24000 is the amount of gross profit Right. Transfer gross profit to the credit side of profit and loss account. So we'll record here one lakh twenty four thousand here. Now let us close the profit and loss account here. The total of credit side, of course, is higher, and the total comes to one lakh forty four thousand. Put the same total here 1,44,000 and of course the net profit will be 1,44,000. When you deduct these expenses, the, you will get the net profit. So the total of uh, profit loss account is 1,44,000. Now let us find out the net profit. Net profit of course will be 86,000. Alright. Now this net profit belongs to the owner and here the owner is head office. So we will transfer the net profit to head office account since we know that head office account is just like a capital account. So show the net profit on the credit side of head office account. We will write here profit and loss account dash net profit. Amount will be 86,000. Now let us get the total of head office account. It will be 4,32,000. All right. Put the same total on the debit side, 432000 And of course, the balance comes to 432000 That itself is the total and also the balance. We'll write here to balance CD. 
and this is nothing but the closing balance of capital account indirectly and so just we'll show the balance there where we used to show capital account so we'll show it first thing on the liabilities side we'll mention here head office account and what is the amount 4 lakh 32 thousand now after taking care of all the items mentioned in the trial balance and taking care of all the adjustments your balance sheet must tally right so let's get the total of balance sheet let's total up the liability side first it comes to 6000 then 3 11 so 14 1 and it, it comes to 546000 we should get the same total on the asset side also 546000 still verify this 6 then 16 17 18 20 24 2 so 3 4 and 5 that's it so the balance sheet tallies with this so that is how you know friends this is how you to solve a full length example on independent branch you listen to the video very carefully you solve the example once on your own and I promise that you will get 14 out of 14 in your university exam. Wish you all the best.